hello and welcome back and you saw the thumbnail you saw the title you know what this video is about cropping up online for the last 12 months or so have been cheaper third-party alternatives to upgrades available from Synology for their NAS systems. Maybe you've purchased a DS923+, Plus, a DS723+, Plus, an RS422+, Plus, or uh, that popular 5-bay, the DS1522+. Plus. You'll know that upgrading this system from standard 1 gigabit Ethernet that it arrived with towards 10 GBE up until about a year ago was only available one way, and that was utilizing this the E10G22 T1 from Synology, a small mini PCIe upgrade that allowed you to add 10 GBE. However, a lot of users slightly bolt at the price tag with the upgrade for this, for example, the 923 Plus delivered via that mini PCIe, rocking out from between $109 to about $130, depending on where you shopped online. Indeed, that price hasn't been tremendously consistent, being arguably all over the place since the launch of that upgrade and the unit itself. Now, over the last couple of years, I've talked to you guys about several different 2.5 GBE and 5 GBE upgrades that you could add via USB unofficially to your Synology NAS system. None of these were officially supported. None of them, I would say, are completely recommended and none of them are completely stable. What I mean by that, as soon as a new Synology larger patch update comes around, chances are the drivers will stop working and these adapters stop working. So before we go any further with this video, it's worth highlighting that as good as it may sound to a number of you, that there are now third party alternatives to Synology's own first party upgrade modules in the market. Keep in mind that doing so is one, not utilizing Synology components and therefore you're tippy toeing outside of what they consider first party support on their systems. And also keep in mind that you may attach an adapter like this today, but doing so you may, but in the next Synology bigger update, render this unworkable. So keep that in mind. But all that said, these little adapters are starting to arrive on the scene at around 57 to 61 or 62 dollars in the market saving you more than 50 percent in some cases versus Synology's own adapters this one here the Excite store or Zeit store um skn a113 mini adapter arrives with a newer controller and driver requirement compared to Synology's own adapter there. So unsurprisingly, I've decided to install this and just see whether it's any good. So straight away, we went ahead with Synology's own adapter. We've already utilized this in numerous tests in the past. Alongside that, we went ahead and took advantage of the new USB to 10 GBE adapter from QNAP. We are covering all the brands in today's video and did a point to point connection from my Windows 11 laptop towards this Synology DS923 Plus. I got that, I installed Synology's own 10 GBE adapter. That's how convenient it is. Obviously you have to do it from a cold boot. You can't hot swap that drive. And inside this, I had four 2.5 inch Kingston DC600M Hot, um, SSDs there, all rated together neatly. So that was our test environment. We connected to that, unsurprisingly, with Synology's own adapter, with the latest DSM firmware, picked up immediately, direct connected to it, did transfers uh, utilizing Atto Disk Benchmark with Crystal Disk, and finally with AJA. And we saw lovely numbers there. Keep in mind, one, I was using OBS on the local machine, which always impacts um, read and write performance, generally write performance more than anything else. And secondly, even though it is a 10 gig connection we have created there via a Gen 2, uh, Gen 3 times 2 adapter, which is 2 gigabit, by the way, um, even though we had all of that, keep in mind that one of these SSDs here would have only have given us uh, three to 400 megabytes per second. So even in a RAID 5 or SHR environment, or even a RAID 0, we're not guaranteed in most cases, even with these synthetic tests, to consistently hit 10 gig per second or 1000 megabytes per second or 1024, don't be that guy in the comments. So that's really what we were playing with, but what about utilizing this third party adapter? So the first thing you probably won't be surprised about is with this adapter, once I connected it into the system after powering it down and connecting to it with the exact same setup, 
it didn't work. It wasn't able to be seen by the system. I went ahead and reconnected to one of the one gig ports there and the NAS was working fine. It was just simply a case that because this did not have the driver inside and Synology Dome DSM and App Center doesn't have that driver, the AQC113C available to me, the result was that drive, that uh, 10 gig adapter there was just not going to work. Now, when you go to the official product pages for this product, and indeed, if you go into the manual that this arrives with, both of them detail how to get hold and install the driver inside this. But much like I mentioned earlier on, this is where we're tippy-toeing out of the comfort and security of being 100% within our warranty software and support and going into the old DIY. What do I mean by that? Well, in order to do this, you have to go to a third-party website, their own download, and download two files. One of them is an SPK, which I don't think I use much in the installation, and the other one was a module.sh file that was allowing you to find out the driver you're going to be putting inside it, but more information that we'll talk about later on. And all of the steps I went through, by the way, are broken down in the description below, along with an article, hopefully very, very soon, on as compares that will go through the steps as well and the download links. But once I went through all of those steps, which were to include not only uploading the files that I've downloaded from that third party website onto my NAS and then going into um, the NAS via SSH, I had to enable SSH going into PuTTY. From PuTTY, I then had to make my way into Verify that I could access that directory. Then from there, executing the driver and getting that installed inside and then rebooting the system. Once I did all of that and then rebooted the system, the NAS was then visible over 10 GBE, much the same. I then disabled the one gig connection and then performed the exact same tests, again, utilizing Atto Disk Benchmark, utilizing Crystal Disk and utilizing AJA. And the performance numbers, although in some cases it's actually better than the Synology adapter, it's worth highlighting once again, these were inconsistent tests. These were tests in both cases that were using point to point. And in both cases, I was using OBS to do screen recording there. So it wasn't really a consistent tests between the two of them. Also keep in mind that the DS923 Plus had already been running for several days when I was utilizing the standard uh, Synology adapter, whereas it had a fresh boot when I was using the third party adapter there. So we're not looking at the performance number side by side. We're not gonna say one is better than the other because it wouldn't be fair. So Sorry about all of the noise. I've got all kinds of updates running there in the background, which unfortunately started an hour before this video and I can't kill them off. But this adapter, we've got to talk about the things about it, not just the fact that we are tippy-toeing outside of uh, secure support from Synology here, but also um, what you're missing out on for that price drop. Because if these two devices are, um, or if the Synology one is double the price, what is it bringing you other than support? Well, I would say construction quality, certainly. It's really hard to emulate this um, here on screen, but I can tell you right now that the Synology adapter feels heavier. Now, it feels heavier because the construction materials feel better. This isn't in any way are accurate beyond your own ears, but that's the cheap adapter. Or say the cheap adapter, that is the third party adapter. And you, I know you can't really tell in audio, but take my word for it, the weight and the construction feels better on the Synology one. I feel like I could bend a lot of this metal on the third party adapter. So you can definitely feel that corners may have been cutting the materials being used, but there's gonna be a number of you thinking, who cares? Because chances are, my system right now, I uh, may be going outside of warranty. This now was released in November, December, 2022. So in that case, right now, in Q we're entering the end of Q1, 2025, this system for some users is erring towards the end of its warranty period. It's not out of warranty, that's important, but still nonetheless, it is something to be wondering. Also, we have to acknowledge that a Synology first party adapter has been made in Synology for their ecosystem, whereas this third party adapter hasn't. And there's definitely gonna be the extra, extra, extra 
security conscious out there that are going to be wondering about using a third party adapter as their NIC and wondering about data packet exchange, wondering about where stuff's going. Now, to be fair, this is an adapter living within a pre-existing ecosystem, so we would have to navigate the data out of there. And also we are talking about a network adapter. So again, it is very constrained by the surrounding environment. But even after I uh, checked data packet exchanges via the network manager and the processes, and I didn't see anything extraneous, didn't see anything sus, there are still gonna be those out there that are not gonna be overly keen on buying a third party unknown adapter in their first party Synology ecosystem. Bottom line, competition is going to be good. And this is available right now when I know in some regions it's actually pretty bloody hard to get hold of some of these Synology adapters. Stock is not completely broadly, globally fantastic, but just keep in mind, if you are going to go down the road of using a third party adapter like this, know the limits and know the risks. Notwithstanding everything I've mentioned about warranty and support and utilizing third party adapters and Synology's position on that, again, I'm not going to say I agree or disagree with it, it's just the status quo. But keep in mind that if you install a big Synology update, it doesn't have to be DSM 1, 2, 3, 4, it can be sub revisions like DSM. 7.1.1, 7.2.1. It could be mini revisions along the way. There's every possibility, just like we saw with the drivers from the likes like uh, David over there in Oz, who supplies us some fantastic drivers for third party adapters in Synology hardware. That a big Synology update can stop this working real easily, which can lead to your NAS not being accessible. And that's the lightest concern for many. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. There'll be a link towards the adapter, of course, from a few different retailers, as well as Synology's own adapter below. And if you're interested in getting hold of one, in upgrading your DS93+, your DS73+, your DS422+, uh, your DS1522+, or more likely that the next generation Synology devices will almost certainly be using these adapters as well. If you do want to get hold of an upgrade and you found this video helpful, please use those links in the description to do so. Do so we're resulting in a small commission allowing me and Eddie to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.